bless you. Praise the Lord. God bless you. My name is Minister Red. I am the pastor here at Christ Our Life Ministries, located in Augusta, Georgia, on 308 Road Street, directly behind the Walmart Lowe's on Bobby Jones Expressway, Interstate 520, heading west. I want to thank you for joining me for my Thursday night worship service, Bible service, Bible study, amen, along with my members, Brother Roland and his beautiful wife, Sister Brittany Peachy, Sister Selena Williams, and her beautiful husband, Stan, my brother, Minister Harvey Cole, and his beautiful wife, Sister Kimberly Cole, my brother, Harry Evans, and we want to continue to remember his wife, Sister Beverly Conyers Evans, who went home to be with the Lord on March the 4th of last year. She was a pillar of this ministry. We love her. We miss her. And we still think about her in the name of Jesus. God bless you, Brother Nathaniel Stevenson. I love you, my friend. Thank you for joining me. Thank you for always here supporting me. I'm nothing without you, but I'm everything with you in the name of Jesus. Thank you for joining my sister church, Spirit of Liberty's Ministries, pastored by the phenomenal Minister Kenya King and his beautiful wife, Sister Donna King. They have services every Sunday morning at 8 a.m. and every Tuesday night at 7 p.m. You ought to join them and be blessed to hear an awesome, powerful word from the Lord in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I am on YouTube. I am on YouTube. There are over 350 messages on my YouTube channel. You ought to join them and feel free to be blessed. Amen. As you listen to those services in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Today's message, part two, part two. And I can tell you right now, there is a part three. Might be a part four because I'm telling you, there's so much God is putting in my spirit concerning this uh, topic, and I'm filled with that knowledge so much right now. Part two, understand until believers un truly understand, until believers truly understand what death is, they can forget about victorious, living victoriously. They can forget about living victoriously in the name of Jesus. Tonight's foundational Bible verse comes out of Romans chapter 8 verse 6. It says for to be carnally minded is death. We know that carnality carn is the state of being worldly lacking spiritual understanding lacking spiritual belief means to be carnally minded means to be an unbeliever of spiritual matter in the name of Jesus. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded, spiritually minded is relating to or affecting the human spirit or soul as opposed to material or physical things, non-material. But to be non-materially minded is life and peace in the name of Jesus. Let us pray. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, we want to thank you for another opportunity to come before your presence and to tell you that we love you because we do. It might be my voice that they recognize, and it might be my face that they know. Thank you for this word. Thank you that you're going to teach this word. Thank you that I get to move out of the way and let you do the speaking. Let no hearer of this message ever think that Roderick Red had any input into it. I have none. All I am is the CD, the cassette, the MP3 player that your word is playing through. Because I am a sinner saved by grace, just like those hearing me tonight. Thank you, God, for this awesome message, for teaching us to better understand what death is. We love you. It's in Jesus' mighty name that we pray. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. God bless you, Sister Selena. I love you. 
Thank you for joining me tonight. Until believers truly understand what death is, they can forget about living victoriously. Sin is the cause of mankind's carnality. Romans 5 and 12 says, as by one man, Adam, sin entered the world, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men. James 1 and 15 says, when lust is conceived, it bringeth forth sin, and sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. Hallelujah. Sin is the cause of mankind's state of being worldly. Sin is the cause of mankind's lack of spiritual understanding. Sin is the cause of mankind's unbelief in the living word of God. And this carnality, here it is right here. This, this is where we're missing it, Sister Selena and Brother Stevenson. This carnality exists. Watch where it exists at. It exists only in our body. It does not exist in the soul. It does not exist in the soul. To, tell, to, to make you know that it does not exist in the soul, the, Lord, the word of the Lord says, the soul that sinneth in the book of Ezekiel, it says, the soul that sinneth, it shall die. In order for the soul to sin, the soul has to be governed by the carnal mind. Because carnality exists only in our body. If you are a carnally minded person, that means that you are governed by your flesh. Paul says in Romans chapter 7, verse 24, he says, O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? Who shall deliver me from the body of carnality? I thank God that with the mind, I serve the law of Christ, but with the body, the law of sin. Has the ministry you attended ever told you that your body is the only place where death is? Has the ministry you attend ever told you that your body is the only place where death is? Well, tonight, I shall. I shall not only tell you, I will show you through scripture that your body is the only place where death is. Our body, man is a tripartite being made up of body, soul, and spirit. Our body enables us to communicate with the physical world what we see. That's why the Bible says to love not the world for the love of the world is not of the Father. The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye and the pride of life is not of the Father but it is of the world. Our body enables us to communicate with the physical world. Our soul is what makes our existence possible. Our spirit enables us to communicate with God. When the breath of life went into the nostrils of man, the soul began to live. 
it is what makes our body's existence possible. The soul is the meeting point of the body and the spirit. It is the meeting point. Genesis 2 and 7 says, And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. Our soul is not carnal, nor is it spiritual. It is neither. Our soul lies between these two realms. It lies between the worldly realm of carnality and it lies between the spiritual realm of spirit. The soul is the meeting point. So Paul tells us, speaking to living souls, he says to the living soul, since the soul is the component of the mind, for it to be carnally minded, for it to be body, bodily minded, to be materially minded, is death. But to be spiritually minded, God minded, Christ minded, is life and peace. The soul, our mind, communicates with the world through the body. And with the living word of God through the spirit. Romans 8, 5 through 6 says, those who live according to the body have their minds See, if you live according to the body, then you, then, your, then you got your soul set on what the body desires. If you live according to your body. Because the body enables us to communicate with the world. But those who live in accordance with the spirit have their minds, have their soul set on spiritual desires. The mind governed. The mind ruled. The mind controlled. The mind led by the flesh is death. But the mind governed, ruled, led by the spirit is life and peace. The mind is neither carnal nor spiritual. It is the meeting point of the two and it has to make the choice as to which one it wants to be governed by. Anyone that chooses to live with the mind governed by the flesh can forget about living victoriously for to be carnally minded is death but to be spiritually minded is life and peace many of today's born again believers live daily lives governed by their body governed by what they see governed by what they lust for, governed by what they desire. What makes me say that? Here it is right there, Brother Stevenson. Materials. The definition of the word materials is relating to or concerned with physical rather than spiritual things. Carnally minded people that the Bible says to be carnally minded is death. So if you want to know what death is, death is you being governed by the carnal mind because the body is the only place where death exists. Death 
Their happiness is gained by possessing material things. People's happiness is gained by possessing material things. Seeking happiness in material things is a sure way of being unhappy because material things always break down. Material things always get stolen. Material things always get people in the argument. You will not have a life of peace if you possess a lot of material things. Because if you possess a lot of material things, people are going to get jealous of you or you're going to get mad because somebody always wanting to borrow something from you or something's always breaking and then it costs a lot of money to fix the material thing. Your mind, the more material things you have, the more your mind is going to be on material things which forces you to be carnally minded, which forces you to never think about spiritual things because your mind is too much being governed by carnality. To be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Spiritual means non-material, formless. It means non-material formless. Watch this right here, Brother Stevens. Genesis 1 and 2. And the earth was without form and void. The earth was without form and void. What's the definition of the word void? Completely empty, death, dead. There was no material when God created the earth. There was no material. He had to speak the material stuff into existence. And Brother Stevenson, when he spoke it into existence, it was spiritual stuff. But when Adam and Eve ate from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, God cursed the earth. So Brother Stevenson, when I taught two weeks ago about being organic, by God cursing the earth, then you really can't get anything of organic matter that is good because the earth is organ is not organic. When God cursed the earth, it lost its organicness. So that's why the Bible says we should pray over our food before we eat it because it's no longer uh, material. It is no longer a made of living matter. When God cursed the earth, it was no longer made of living matter. That's why trees, leaves fall off every year because the trees, they, they die. That's why plants, that's why grass dies and goes to sleep in the wintertime. Because God cursed it. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. When God created the earth, he created a material, a formless material that lacked life. He had to speak life into it, and Christ has been trying to speak life into living souls, not human bodies. But if, like the woman with the 12 year issue of blood, she says, if, if I may but just touch the hem of his garment, I shall be made whole. Her, her soul, there was nothing ever wrong with her soul. The problem was with her body. But when Christ touched, when, when Christ touched her in, in, in the soul and she was, spiritually minded, it impacted the entire makeup of her existence, the spirit, soul, and body. The word of God gave life to her immortal body. If material things 
of what you're talking about, when you say I'm blessed, then you have no idea what a blessing is, nor are you spiritually minded. If, because if you say spiritual things, because God don't give material things, God give blessings. And if you think that God's blessings are material things, then you're missing the picture because God is non-material. So how can a non-material God give you material things? Perfect health is not material. Perfect health is spiritual. The ability to see, the ability to walk, the ability to talk, the ability to hear is not material. It is spiritual. Stop thinking that the material things are blessings from God. No. They're components of this world that the eye sees and that the carnal mind craves that has nothing to do with spirituality because spirituality is non-material. People have had to make up for the spiritual impoverishment. What is impoverished? Reduce the poverty, exhausted. They're, because they're spiritually exhausted, they have to make up for the spiritual exhaustion by accumulating material things. And then when y'all see people with material things, and then they say, the Lord blessed me with this. No, he did not. The God, God blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heaven. God blesses us with spiritual things. God don't bless us with materials. Job knew that. That's why when all the Job's, everything happened around, all Job lost all the material stuff. Job didn't curse God. When, when spiritual blessings come, material blessings seem unimportant. You can have all the, you can have all the, uh, I'm going to tell you, Naaman, the serial general, had all types of spiritual blessing, but he lacked spiritual health, so he had to go to the man of God to get healed of his leprosy. But he had all types of, of material blessings. The high priest gave Judas 30 circles of silver, material blessings to the, to, uh, to, uh, to, uh, to uh, deny the spiritual living word of God to betray spiritual material bl blessings. King Saul thought that the material blessings of bringing back from Amalekite, the, the king and all the best of the sheep, material blessings. Tornado come in and take all your material. Hurricane come in, take all your material. You lose all types of happiness, but yet you got perfect health. It is God's way of showing us that we lack a spiritual mind and that we are governed by a carnal mind. And every time you go out and you possess material, ma earth worldly, earthly material, you distance yourself from God. The Bible says, draw nigh unto God, and he will draw nigh unto you. It's impossible to draw nigh unto God if you keep coming into possession of material things that and God didn't give you that. If, if God, the Bible says, you brought nothing into the world, you ain't taking nothing out. So if you didn't bring no material stuff in the world with you, and you ain't taking no material stuff with you, then, then why get it? Why don't you just own nothing but a relationship with God? Why don't you allow yourself to be governed by the Spirit? The Bible says having food, clothing, and raiment, 
be content. God bless you, Sister Erica Holloman. I love you. We ain't content with just having food, clothing, and raiment. We ain't content. We got to have a lot of possess. We got to live. We got to, we got to stay up with the Joneses. When spiritual blessings come, material blessings seem unimportant. As long as we desire material things, this is all we will receive. Oh, yeah, Brother Stevenson, the rich young ruler. He won't, no, he wasn't giving up the material. He wasn't giving up the material stuff. I ain't, I, ain't, I, ain't walking, I ain't walking in spiritual. I ain't going to be governed by the spirit. No, I'm not doing that. I'm not. You're not going to make me poor. You're not going to make me carnally impoverished. You're not going to do that. As long as we desire material things, this is all we receive, and we remain spiritually impoverished. If that's all you want, if that's all you, if that's all you do is, oh God, please bless me with a car. Oh God, please bless me with a husband. Oh God, please bless me with a wife. Oh God, please bless me with a good job. Oh God, please bless me. Please bless, but, but, ask. You don't have, and I'm gonna tell you something right now. You don't have to ask God to heal you of a disease. By His stripes, you are healed. All you got to do is believe that. To be carnally minded is to be spiritually dead. To be material minded is to be spiritually dead. You'll never find happiness in material. Oh, yes, Sister Holloman. That's exact. Peace is non material, peace is spiritual. The fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering, meekness, kindness, temperance. Faith, against such there is no law. To be material minded is to be spiritually minded. The next time you look at people that, that's got a lot of stuff, I'm going to tell you, people that possess a lot of material stuff, I'm trying to tell you, the, 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 the material stuff is going to keep you distance from God because, because somebody's going to always want it. Or it is always going to tear up. You can't. Not you. You you can't walk around. You can't walk around in a pair of. Uh, $19 Walmart tennis shoes. You got to go to. Uh, Fleet Feet. You got to go to Academy. You got to go to to one of them big stores. You got to go to the mall. You got to go to the Nike store. You got to make sure you get you some Nikes. You got to make sure you get you some Air Jordan. People, Brother Stevenson, people killing people for Air Jordans. You know why? Because to be Air Jordan minded, because I'm going to say it, I'm going to tell y'all, I know to be, to be Air Jordan minded. Oh, yes, Sister Erica Holloman, them doggone $20 suits walk the same way. They do the same thing. But, but, the, but you know, the carnal mind, the carnal mind says, the, the, and you know what, and Sister Holloman, you, and Sister Holloman, you know what, Sister Holloman, and, 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 and they say, they say that, it, it, so in school today, they say people are being bullied. They say people are being a, 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 a peer pressure. The peer pressure comes from people that's got material, a bunch of material things are putting peer pressure on people that do not. It says the people that do not have the material that the material people got, they want to, the, 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 the lust of the flesh, which bringing forth sin, and sin when it is finished, bringing forth death. It kills the spiritual mindset. The, 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 the mind, the soul never spends any time in the non-material realm. The, 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 the soul, the mind of man is completely governed by his body, which is where death lives at. 
Death lives in the body. Life lives in the spirit. To be mindful of this world we live in is to be spiritually dead. Sinners, sinners today are living souls who are spiritually dead beings who are governed by the flesh and not by the living word of God, the life of Christ. 1 John 5 and 12 says, He that hath the Son hath life. And he that hath not the Son of God hath life. God's Son is life. Life is spiritual. God's Son is not material. Since God's Son is not material, God's Son is not going to give you material things. God's son is not material. This is the verse right here. Look at what the word says to born again believers. Here it is right there. Here it is right there. This, this right here is what's going to help y'all. 1 John 5, chapter 5, verse 4. Here it is right there. Because you got people that they, they, God has dealt to every man a measure of faith. But they don't, they don't use, but faith is spiritual. And, and, and faith ain't for you. And you don't use faith to get material things. You use faith to get more faith. So look at what 1 John chapter 5, verse 4 has to say to born-again believers that still walk around carnally minded. Whatsoever is born of God. God is spirit, so that which is born of the spirit is spirit, and that which is born of the flesh is flesh. Whatsoever is born of God overcometh the material world. And this is the victory that overcometh the material world. Here it is right there. Even our faith. Because we take our faith and we use it to, to get to mature that. Because the first thing I say is that, you know, oh, oh, my faith, my faith got that for me. Oh, oh, my faith. Oh, I believe, I believe God for that. I believe God for that. So many born again believers live carnally, but they love to talk faith, which is not seen. Hebrews 11 and 1 says, that faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. And Sister Erica, you are so right. Faith without works is dead. As the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. That's what James says. James says, the body without the spirit is dead. That's what I'm trying to tell y'all. Death only exists in our body. That is why I do not look like I looked when I was 18. September the 12th, I will be 58. I will be 40 years older than 18. I can see the manifestation in the mirror of the dust beginning to return into my life, into my body life. But while the dust is returning, my body is returning back to the dust, my soul is living in the spirit. That is why Jesus was able to pull up Lazarus from the dead. Because Lazarus had a spiritual mind in Christ 
knew him. And Christ said, where have you laid him? And when he said that, he was not talking about his body. He wanted to know where they lay Lazarus' body so that he could speak to the soul that lives spiritually to tell it to get back in your body and come, get, and come forth. When Jesus said, Lazarus, come forth, he was not talking to his body. He was talking to the soul because the soul is what gives us our existence. The body is the only place where death exists. Jesus showed us through his raising of Lazarus, through his raising of Jairus' daughter, through his raising of the widow's son, Jesus showed us the power of the spiritual mind. But we are governed by our body. And as long as we are governed by our body, we will crave material things. And as long as we crave material things, we will die with the material things. You got the faith to believe in God. But your faith isn't strong enough to overcome this material mess. So, y'all, stay in it. Y'all, stay in this man-made, created material. Goodbye. Goodbye. Go, go, go on and get off. Goodbye. Go on and get off this my Facebook page. Go on and get off my uh, YouTube channel. Go on and get off material mess. LGBT. The flesh after the flesh. Flesh lusting after the flesh. I got you, Brother Brian Wiggins. Thank you for letting me know that. I will send up prayers for you and your beautiful wife and your son tonight. You tell Rachel I said hello and I love her. You got born again believers that believe in God and it takes faith to believe in God but the faith they got ain't strong enough to overcome living in this material mess. All this mess is non is, is material. It is not spiritual. Spiritual is non-material. Our purpose here on earth is to manifest the very nature of our spirit. Our purpose here on earth is to manifest the very nature of our spirit, which is touched by the spirit of God. The spirit itself bears witness with our spirit, the non-material bears witness with the non-material. Breath is non-material. You might can collect blood from a person's body, but you can't collect breath from a person's body. The reason why you can't collect breath from a person's body is because when the 
The breath goes in as oxygen, but it comes out as carbon dioxide. It, the body doesn't even release what it takes in. Because if you get caught in a room full of carbon dioxide with no oxygen, you will die. The human body lives off of oxygen, not carbon dioxide. The spirit is not oxygen. The spirit is life. The spirit is living matter. The spirit is God himself. The spirit is neither having beginning of days nor ending of life. The spirit is Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. The spirit itself bears witness with it. God gave us a spirit. When he created us in his own image, after his likeness, and not after material things, in our spirit, is supposed to be bearing witness with his spirit that we are the children of God. Children of God are not material mind governed. That's why Abraham wouldn't take nothing from the five kings. That's why Elijah wouldn't take nothing from Naaman. That's why King Saul wasn't supposed to take none from the Amalekites. That's why Balaam wasn't supposed to take none from Barak when he told him to curse the children of Israel. That's why uh, Achan wasn't supposed to take none out of Jericho. That's why Nadab and Abihu weren't supposed to take uh, false fire. You know, they took material in there. They took fire in there, material fire, because they, you know, they thought the fire that God was looking for was the fire, you know, to go into the, into the tent. But the fire God was looking for was spiritual fire, Holy Ghost fire. And the Bible says, Nadab and Abihu came before the Lord with false fire and God just consumed them. The spirit itself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. No children, not children of this material world. The spirit itself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. His spirit does not bear witness with the children of this world. I'm going to tell you tonight, you better check how much stuff you possess. You know, on the TV show, they got this TV show called Hoarders. You might your your house may not look like that hoarder's house, but you you know you're a hoarder. You know you're a hoarder. You got thirty pairs of tennis shoes. Forty pairs of women got forty pairs of high heel shoes. Two hundred and sixty dresses. 30 wigs, 50 bras, 200 pair of panties. If, if you wore, if you only had five pair of panties, ain't nobody gonna know it but you. 
You ain't got to go out and spend your money on a bunch of clothes, bunch of shoes, bunch of earrings. Now, we done left from buying clothes. Now, we, now we're putting tattoos all over our bodies. Now, we're putting earrings all over the place, all over our bodies. Now we, now we, we, we can't, we, you know, we can't, our, our Apple, our Apple uh, uh, 10, our Apple 11 iPhone is good, but, but no, no, I, I need the, I need the new Apple 13. It's got three cameras on the back of it. You know, because you, you, you too, you too much still locked into this world and the only thing that locks you into this world is the carnal mind and the bible says to be carnally minded is death what is death death is to be a person that is still allowing yourself to be governed it is the person that is allowing their living soul to be governed by the world you still crave worldly things and then when you get them you got the audacity to say that you got it from God by faith whatsoever is born of God overcome of the world and this is the victory that overcome of the world even now with faith because y'all think y'all's faith is what's so valuable to material possessions. God has dealt to every man a measure of faith, whether you are born again believer or not. The Bible does not say God has dealt to every believer a measure of faith. This verse says God has dealt to every man. So that means every man is composed of a body, a soul, and a spirit. The body is where death exists. The spirit is where life exists. The soul is what gives us our existence. You can talk faith all you want to talk. But I'm going to tell you something tonight, and I don't care if you don't believe me. You believe what you want to believe. You're going to do that anyway. Faith. God did not give you faith to prosper you in this world, in this material world. God gave you faith so that you may please him in this material world. Without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God, and you ain't coming to God through materials because God is non-material. He that cometh to God must believe. What is carnality? Lacking spiritual belief. He that cometh to God. So he's not talking about the body here. He's talking about the living soul. The living soul that comes to the spirit. He that cometh to God must believe that is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. What is he rewarding? What is this reward? Paul says, there is a reward laid up for me. A crown, of, the reward is the crown of righteousness. The reward is eternal life. Not a stupid brand new car, not a stupid house, not a good husband, not a good wife, not health, not finances. Until believers truly understand what death is, you can forget about living victoriously because you're not, because you're always going to end up with a material that is going to die. And God's, and so, and so when God cursed, when Adam and Eve sinned, God cursed the earth 
God cursed the world. And so, so God has to create a new heaven and a new earth. He has to create us without the material. So that's why when Pastor Red leaves this world, every material thing he owns, I have to put it in a will to give it to Deli, Reggie, and Ezra Nay. Brother Stevenson, do you have a will yet? Because if you don't, you better get one because death exists in our body. And one day, is going to overcome our body and the ones that we love if we don't have a will to give them what we have accumulated in this world somebody that we do not love is going to get it got a will. Deli, Reggie, and Nezune is going to get everything that I own when I give up the ghost. I will be buried in a casket with no material other than the very thing that Paul told Timothy, clothe raiment. I need food while I'm living. I need clothing while I'm living. I need shelter while I'm living. When I die, all I need, I don't need clothing, but I know they're going to put I know they're going to put me in some clothes. Oh, yes, yeah, Sister Erica. By yourself, too. Oh, yeah, by yourself, too. So all of them, so, so, so what I want to do, so Sister Erica, what I want to do, I want to make, I want to make sure that when I die, that Deli, if I die before my wife, if I die before my kids, I want to make sure that I don't have so much material mess that my wife and my son and my daughter don't even want. So why do I have, why is it that when I die, I leave my wife with mess that she has no desire to have? So why don't me and my wife agree on the same thing so that if she dies, I get to keep because we both agree that that's what we wanted. And that's why Bible says, how can two walk together except they be agreed? Because two, because, because one person can't walk carnally minded and the other person walk spiritually minded. That's where divorce comes from. Divorce comes from the carnal mind because the material did not feel like it was being loved by the other material. Because this body you're looking at is a material body. And so the material body loves itself. That's why we brush our teeth. That's why we wash our face. That's why we comb our hair. That's why we try to look as good as we can look before we go out in the public eye. Because we don't want nobody talking about our body, which is where death exists. And so you got people today, 
that call themselves born again believers got more Botox in them than they got the living word of God. Got more tattoos on them than they got the living word of God. Got more possessions than they got the living word of God. And then they wonder why they can't live victoriously in a world that when the wrath of God is poured out on the material world, they can't find any happiness and they're upset because they have lost everything. When them hurricanes be coming through and them tornadoes and then on the news, they're like, we lost everything. But they still standing there talking in the camera unhurt. I can't believe it. I can't, everything's gone. Every, every, uh, all my pictures, all the pictures, all, all, all the, all the, my, my grandmama's, the stuff that my grandmama gave me, oh, it's all gone. Because they find their happiness in material things, but they'll tell you their happiness is in the Lord. If material things are what you're talking about, when you say I'm blessed, you have no idea what a blessing is, nor are you spiritually minded. Thank you for joining me tonight. Part three of this message I will deliver to you on Sunday if the death in my body does not take me out of this world. If death in my body takes me out of this world before Sunday, I just want you to know that Pastor Red was governed by a spiritual mind. And when I get up out of this body, the Lord is going to say to me, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Enter into the joy of the Lord because I get my joy from having a relationship with him and not a relationship with this material world. I don't care if you got a 2023 car. I'm going to drive my 1992 Ford Ranger. And Sister Erica Holloman, I most definitely will pray for Dexter that he's going to join in the Air Force. And I... If, if you would have asked me, I would have told you to tell him if he's going to go into the military to go into the Air Force. Thank you for letting me know that, and I will pray for Dexter. As sure as there's a God in heaven, Dexter will be prayed for. Always remember this. If there's nothing you take from tonight's message, please take what this slide says. If material things are what you're talking about, when you say I'm blessed, you have no idea what a blessing is. So Sister Erica, you know, you you talk to people sometimes and they'll say, how you doing? Oh, I'm blessed. You know what I want? How, how, how do you know you're blessed? How do you know you're blessed? Oh, God bless me to pay off my house. God bless me to pay off my car. You don't, you don't, you don't, you do not need God to help you pay off your house. You do not need God to help you pay off your car. All you got to do is go to work, make the money, pay it off. That's all. You don't need God for that. 
Worldly people, atheists, atheists, atheists don't, don't believe in God, and, and they paying off houses, and, 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 and they paying off cars, and you ain't going to never hear them say nothing about being blessed, because blessed is a spiritual word. Oh, yeah, Brother Stevenson, let's follow the pattern to eternal life. And the, and, the, and the only way to follow the pattern to spiritual life is we have to follow the spiritual pattern, and we have to be governed by a spiritual God. As many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Thank y'all so much for joining me tonight. Thank you so much. I tell you, you know what, I, I'm going to tell you, I used to live, I used to live so broke. I used to live so broke because I used to, because I used to always want what everybody else wanted. I want, I mean, just as soon as I would, I would get money, I would, I would go and spend it. And I would pay, and I would get credit cards, and I would pay the minimum minimum of amount of balance, and then I would pay the minimum, and then and then uh, just as soon as I knew that the minimum was paid, I'd go right back and charge that minimum right back on that credit card. Because I was governed by my body. I still got credit cards today but there's zero balance because now I allow God to dictate the materials that I crave in 90% of the time <laughs> I come to yeah, he says you don't need that what you got is sufficient. That's why Paul sought the Lord three times to take that thorn out of his flesh and God said my grace is sufficient for whatever material that is driving you crazy. My grace is sufficient for you. Thank you for joining me. Let us pray. Father in the mighty name of Jesus. God, we sometimes have a hard time denying this material world. We're not going to sit up here and say that we don't. Because all we have to do is go look in our garages, in our closets, in our kitchens, in our living rooms, in our bank accounts, our credit cards, the things that we do, the people we hang around, somewhere there, we got a material problem. And we thank you for this word tonight that we will begin to be governed by the spirit and we will begin to overcome this material world by being content with the things that we have. Thank you, God, that you see our faults. Thank you that you shine light on those faults. Thank you that your word says, brethren, if a man be overtaken in the fall, ye which are spiritual, restore such a one in the spirit of meekness. This word wasn't a hard word. This word was a word of meekness to us who know that we are overtaken in the fault. 
of living according to this material world being governed by our body rather than by the living word of God. Thank you for tonight's message. Thank you for the continuation of this message on Sunday. It's in the mighty name of Jesus that we pray. Amen and amen. Thank you for joining me. I will see you Sunday morning at 8 a.m. with Pastor King, and then I'll be back before you Sunday if death doesn't take me out of here with part three of this message that is entitled, Amen. You ain't, until believers truly understand what death is, they can forget about living victoriously. God bless you. I love every last one of you. Amen and amen.